How you feeling? Gotta be honest with you, pal. I've been better. <laughs> hey, what's going on, everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today we're joined by Pete Davidson. He's an actor and comedian you probably know best from his time at Saturday Night Live. He also has a new comedy special on the way. It's called Alive from New York, and it's set to hit Netflix on February 25th. Pete Davidson, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, man. Uh, What's your mindset going into this, Pete? Are you a spicy food guy? No, I have never eaten anything spicy. Uh, I am horrified. Uh, I was getting makeup uh, in the makeup room because uh, I need that shit. And Trinidad James walks in. I was like, oh, wow, that's awesome. Uh, how are you? Uh, and he's like, you doing hot ones? I was like, yeah. He's like, you don't need no makeup. <laughs> he was like, you need tissues. It looks like, though, do you have, like, a chili pepper tattoo? <sighs> yeah, no, it's uh, an Italian oh, horn, but unfortunately they look fucking exactly <laughs> alike. So, yeah, I m it might as well be. So, I think that it's interesting that you got your start in stand-up at such a young age, taking the ferry in from Staten Island when most of your peers were probably taking the bus to after-school activities. What are the pros and cons of being raised in comedy clubs and then coming of age around mostly much older comedians? Um, being raised in comedy club is Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's the only time I made friends because uh, people are like weird in comedy and this type of field. So I got to like meet a lot of cool people and it was like a really fun escape to get away from Staten Island, you know? Why is it important for comedians to spend three hours at the comedy club, even if they're only performing a 15-minute set? Um, you're supposed to hang uh, when you start because you're just supposed to, like, be around. Half the stuff that I've ever gotten has just been, like, right place, right time. Sometimes you'll just hang out and Chappelle will pop in. You get to talk to, like, Attell or, like, you get to talk to, like, all these great comedians. What are the markings of success for a comedy special? Like, are you looking for like respect from peers? Does it really just come down to how many people stream it? Like, what does success mean? Um, the first special I put out, I was like 22, and I it wasn't. No, I don't think I don't think it was like horrible. It just like it was probably like the best I could do at then, and this is the best I could do at like now. I just have some stuff I would like to say. I'm not looking for like respect from anybody. I just like I really love stand up. And I'm fucking stoked that I get to do one with like Netflix. That's like pretty cool. Big jump. Still going in. You gotta clear the bone, otherwise you'll be on Reddit and they'll call you a pussy and shit. <laughs> <laughs> So this summer, you star in King of Staten Island, a Judd Apatow movie loosely based on your upbringing in the Forgotten Borough. Yes, sir. How would you explain Staten Island to someone you meet abroad who's never heard of it? Um, Staten Island's like, uh, it's like if you go in a time machine, like to 1980, it's just like everything's the same. It's just a bunch of Italian restaurants. Um, everybody's still kind of is stuck in their ways. It's like adorable and like sad at the same time. Where does Staten Island's The Looney Bin rank in the pantheon of great New York City comedy clubs? Oh, dude, The Looney Bin was crazy. It was a, it was a fucking like bowling alley comedy. It was club, a comedy right? club inside of a bowling alley next to a LA Fitness and a Wendy's. <laughs> so like, it sucked though, cause like when you were bombing, you could hear people bowling. <laughs> like there would be like birthday parties. You'd be like, yeah, so like you know, my mom's like crazy, you know, and you'd just hear like spare, and you're like, oh fuck, this is not going very well. But I love that club. That club was clearly mob run. Um, and it was so much fun because the, <laughs> the owner would just go up to you and be like, we'll open next weekend. You know, like it would, it would be very like weekend to weekend. So like it was always very fun. And like it was my first like um, time ever on stage. Have you ever been to uh, Big Nose Kate's? Yes. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I think once or twice. I think, yeah. Big Nose Gates is cool. I mean, like, I'm not much of a going out guy, as you can tell. Uh, <laughs> I went out once or twice there, and there was Bud Light. Are you one of these Staten Island people that brag, like, Staten Island has the best pizza in New York? You know, there's no, a lot of... It doesn't. LMB's the best pizza in New York, by far. I don't think there's a com competitor, but Staten Island has the best, like, overall pizza. 
Like, if you can go to any pizza place there, you're you're probably okay. If I only have time for one, the Lighthouse Museum or the Tugboat Graveyard? Oh, no. But you got to go to the dump, dude. You got to go to the Staten Island dump. That's where the history is. That's It is. Yeah, it's filled with, like, old Hondas and bodies. You should go there. It's great. I'm Pete's recommendation. I got to go check it out. Are you yeah. ready to move on? Absolutely. Fiji Firewater in the three spot. Okay. How are we doing so far? That sounds like a code. Um, I don't know, man. I'm getting a little shaky over here. So Pete, you joined Saturday Night Live in 2014, becoming one of the youngest cast members in the show's storied history. Yes, the Make-A-Wish program. <laughs> Sorry. You always hear these stories like Drake getting Bobby Flay to cook for the cast. When you think about these over-the-top, generous things that guest hosts have done to show their appreciation. Yeah, it was kind of annoying because it was like during writing night. Really? It was <laughs> yeah, like a it was like we were like in the middle of like working on his show and he's like, yo, Bobby Flay's here. And we were like, cool, dude, we have like fucking 20 hours to fucking put all this shit together. He interrupted the homework. He's very sweet. He's very sweet. It was very nice, but it was wrong time. Do you have an all-time favorite music performance? I liked when Future was on it. I liked it because Lauren Michaels called him the Future and he calls the weekend weekend. And that's my favorite thing ever. <laughs> And I also loved it because it was just this moment where I was like, oh, cool, this is like shit I'm into, you know? So it was like the first time when I was there where I saw it kind of switch to like, now we have the baby on it and shit. So it was a really cool moment. My heart's doing weird shit. That might just be because of the things I do at home, but. <laughs> this is really intense. This is like a thing. This is cool. I know this one is hot because there's very little, like, work on the label. You think, like, they're underselling over delivery? Yeah, they're like, fuck you, it's hot. <laughs> Alright. Ah, oh, fuck. So, from talking to a lot of stand-ups over the years, it seems like many feel pressured by the times we're living in, where audiences seem to be in a heightened state of awareness, and then it's so routine now for material to be opportunistically taken out of context. Right. Where do you stand on performing at college campuses now? I know you swore it off last year. Yeah, I did, and then they were like, money. And I was like, so I'm going back. Because <laughs> uh, I love money so much. It's so great. Uh, I No, I, it's really hard to perform at colleges. Uh, but half of it, I think, is like in my head, too. Because there's this like stigma. It's like, oh, you can't say anything because you'd be offended. You know, which is why I tried to do the whole NDA thing. I was trying to shoot a special. It wasn't like I'm like, you can't talk about my stuff. It's like once a joke gets out and it's in print and it's out of context and you don't see me do it or you see how I say it, then like it could mean the fucking most horrible thing ever. The thing about millennials is they're very passionate people. Like they want to help, but they have no information behind it. They just, they hear like, help this. You're like, yeah, fuck yeah. Like they don't even like look or read or do anything because they're just so instant, you know? Yeah. So that's why, you know, that's why it's so difficult. I was taking a piss in the bathroom. I was like, I can't believe all the m major celebrities have taken giant dumps in here. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, you know, sat in it for a second, appreciated the moment. All right, so Pete, at the five mark, we do this thing called Explain That Gram, where we do a deep dive on our guest's Instagram, pull interesting pictures that need more context. Okay. Can't do it for you because yes. you got rid of the internet a I year did. ago. Yes. How do you think that's affected your life? Do you think it's improved your life? It's definitely helped my mental health, uh, I think. It's just, I don't think it's good for anybody, but especially anybody that has like a job around this stuff. Uh, Cause you just, you see every comment. Also like no one gives a fuck about your fucking shoes or your watch <laughs> or your truck or any of that shit. So you're all corny. <laughs> We're all laughing. Yeah. Well, you know what, Pete? You still have pics on the internet. No, I do. I have some rough ones. We still pulled some stuff that we're going to have you well. explain, okay, Pete? Yes. And first up, it's you courtside at Madison Square Garden with Chris Rock. He was very upset that I was the guy. He, he didn't even say hello before. Like, we, there's a room where you meet up there, and he didn't even say hello. And then he figured out that I was the only other, like, person on TV there. And he was like, hey! <laughs> <laughs> But I was so excited because I got the picture. I like going with uh, Josh Safty. He's really fun to watch the game with because he talks to the refs. She'll run by and be like, come on, Janet. That wasn't cool, Janet. Like, 
you know, come on, man, look for the three seconds, Janet. And once in a while, the the ref will like laugh or whatever, and it's the fucking funniest <laughs> thing ever. It just feels so like you feel like a kid again when you like, oh, I got the ref to laugh. Here you oh, are dear. walking the runway at Alexander Wang. Nosferatu 2020, baby. Alexander Wang is a very nice gentleman. Uh, I think his clothes are sick, and he was like, would you like to do this? And I was like, it would be an honor, kind of like this show. And I was like, fuck yeah, I'm going to do that. Will I not do that? There's a really funny photo of Anna Wintour very disappointed that I walked by. That's in my room somewhere. They have a tough job, man, those models. They have to eat, like, fucking mints. And, like, yeah, <laughs> they don't even get to, like, drink water. It they doesn't just, get talked about They don't about even enough, get to yeah. wear deodorant. They just they have, they have a rough job, those, those ladies, you know, just jeweling, living on jewels. What do you remember about being on stage with Machine Gun Kelly follow-up? Where did you get a Shane Falco jersey? Thank you, dude. Uh, a good, <laughs> I appreciate that. Because uh, a good friend of mine, uh, we're very into Keanu Reeves, and uh, peep the double watch, SpongeBob. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I, it's Coles' watch. I was wearing it because he didn't want to lose it. Um, I got it online. We're very big Keanu Reeves fans. But before the fucking wave, I, once there's this movie uh, called Knock Knock. Have you seen it? No. So, like, it's this Keanu Reeves movie, you gotta see it. Anyway, long story short, these two girls that are, like, young, raid his house when his family's away. They, like, force him to fuck, like, they will not let him go, so they have sex with him or whatever. And then at the end, uh, while they're about to kill him, he just goes, What did you expect? It was free pizza! And ever since then, I've been the biggest Keanu Reeves <laughs> fan. I know that makes no sense, but, uh, yeah, love the Shane Falco jersey. You want me to eat? all of these chicken wings and not cry it can't be done oh this one's not so bad oh it is <laughs> sometimes we speak too soon with hot sauce no yeah i speak too soon a lot in life <laughs> self-awareness joke mate my pot was good <laughs> So you've been on TV a long time, getting recognized in public. I'm sure that that's been happening for you, but becoming a target for paparazzi in more recent years has to have been a strange experience. Is there any humor that you can find in being chased around by photographers or is it all just one giant nuisance with no upside? Well, it's really annoying because like I live in Staten Island and they come there now because like Ariana Grande made me all famous and stuff. So she like, it's all her fault. Uh, it is. She sent the wolves on me. Now, it's a, she made me and created me or whatever they say. Um, so I, it sucks. It's so embarrassing because, like, I have a family that, like, my mom has to go to work, you know, and there's these fucking weirdos outside. And it's embarrassing and it sucks. And I like to smoke weed and be high in public. And it's very scary when someone's like, rah, 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 because, you know, you feel like you're in the future. When there's paparazzi outside, does it affect how you dress? Like, is there a part of you that's like, I got to get this fit off for the Daily Mail? <laughs> no, I stopped. I don't really try to dress. I used to when I had the gram. Because <laughs> you just scroll through like hypebeast and you're like, ooh, off-white shoes. I guess that's what the cool kids are wearing. And then you realize like when you're not online that that's what broke kids think that's what rich people should wear. And it's lame. It's like, yeah, I've stopped dressing at all or caring about anything like that at all. It's a really great feeling once you finally just give up. Oh, no. This is a rough one. This is really hard now. Oh. All right. Dom's coming in. She always uh, senses when somebody could use a fresh one. Thank Careful you. around your eyes, Pete. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna start crying. Killed that oat milk. Yeah, I did. <laughs> Thank you, man. <laughs> so in the wake of Uncut Gems, there have been all these highlight videos best emerging. Best fucking movie ever. Excellent movie. Oh my God, best last 20 minutes of that movie is the best fucking cinema I've ever seen in my life. And then as a byproduct of that, there are all these highlight videos emerging of Adam Sandler playing basketball, crying, thinking about the end of Uncut Gems. Yeah but you can't touch your face, right? <laughs> yeah. Isn't that the rule? Well, there's no rules, but I just, I don't wanna, I don't wanna exacerbate the situation. This is where it is. Making me nervous. Oh no, this is where, this is a new one. Okay, cool, I'm just gonna cry. <laughs> it's okay, that's what the people want. As someone who also plays pickup basketball from time to time, who is the most athletic comedian you've ever seen who? Sandler. 
Really? Sandler could fucking ball, dude. He, and he plays like dirty. Him and his boys. It's pretty great. He's like really, really good and competitive. He has like a, the heel back you down and like he'll really fucking like, at first you're like, this is cool. Fuck. Uh, at first you're like, this is really cool. It's, I'm playing ball with Adam Sandler. And then you're like, ow. You know? You really hurt me, man. Do you have a favorite memory from that day that you got to shag fly balls and do BP with your uh, MLB doppelganger, Christian Yelich? Dude, I got fucking yelled at. They didn't tell. Holy shit. Okay. They didn't tell the fucking team that I was coming. They only. Uh, it was just a surprise with this nerdy little PR guy that I met. He was like, hey, we should surprise Christian. I was like, yeah, cool, dude. That'd be sick. You know, like, of course, I would love to do that. So I get there, they dress me up like them, they film me, they make this whole big thing, and I, and I just go out there during stretches, and I'm like, what's up, everybody? And they're all like, what the fuck? And then the batting coach goes, son, if you don't get the fuck off my fucking field, in front of all the MBL, MLB players, uh, and then I just like, the rest of the game just sat next to the bench. <laughs> then after they were like, would you like to be Christian? I was like, I guess, and he was like, hey man, I want to shag some fly balls. <laughs> Like, yes, please. <laughs> oh, everybody just feels bad. It's All right, so Pete. Funny, dude. All right, Pete. Yes, sir. It's that time of the show. Okay. To bomb beyond insanity. Oh, fuck. Oh, it's. All right. Fuck you, dude. No, I'm serious over here. Holy shit, Paul. That's right, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As a rap fan? <laughs> <laughs> I did it. As a rap fan, where do you stand on Eminem these days? Yeah. There seems to be this divide. People are like, he's the greatest lyricist of all time. Yeah. Versus others that are like, you know, he's like a fart joke uncle screaming into the void. No, he's obviously one of the best of all time. But he's annoying, my friend. He's not doing a good job at it. Multiple friends, you yeah. know? He won't leave any of my friends alone. Because having gotten your break from wiling out and doing shows with Nick Cannon, were you able yeah, to pick well, a side? Yeah, stop. <laughs> <laughs> but Colson won. Oh my goodness, dude. Oh. Yeah, because, you know, <sighs> your buddy Machine Gun Kelly and Eminem, they traded diss tracks. Yes, sir. That old man got so angry in his little cave. <laughs> oh, my friend killed that ass. That was awesome. What the fuck? So I know you got stuck with the bill at that much publicized dinner that you had with Kid Cudi and Kanye last year. Yeah. What's different about having Kanye on SNL? It seems like uh, everything's different when he comes to the when he comes to the show. Uh yeah, it's really Kanye's show when Kanye comes to SNL. When Kanye goes anywhere, hey, well, it's really all Kanye's thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not fucking around. I'm not trying to be funny. This shit is the bomb. Wow. Uh, okay, Pete. Yeah. We got two <coughs> two wings to go. <sighs> How you feeling? Gotta be honest with you, pal. I've been better. <laughs> 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 oh, fuck, dude. I'm really having a rough time. I feel you, Pete. I feel you, Pete. I'm gonna do it. But uh, I might pass out. Well, I'm right here with you. I will say this is heroic, Pete. Oh, thank you. Just trying to be like my dad. No, this I... is my 9/11. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can I have any more tissues? And hey, Dom's standing right by. She's got oat milk. She's got tissues. Holy fuck! Am I the worst? No. Pete. Pete, if anything, I'd make a case for best. Are you sure? Yes. 
Fuck, dude. I'm honestly, I'm not trying to be fun. I really can't right now. Holy it's okay. Shit. It's okay. Let's chill for a sec. Oh my goodness. Wow. You gotta get your head checked. <laughs> I'm coming from me. Wow. That's crazy. I don't think I'm doing whole fucking bone no more. Hey. Sorry, it read it. <coughs> don't worry about that. This one is the Widowmaker from Australia. Oh, my mom should have this one. <clears throat> Still got it. Still got it. No voice. Still got it. Okay, Widowmaker. Make me a widow. <laughs> Dude, this stuff thing, this thing has stuff on it. All right, Pete, that's good. That's good. Thank you. That's good. Okay. So I read mm -hmm. so in you... your paper magazine profile mm -hmm. that you turned your basement, your mom's basement. My basement, yeah. Into what sounds like the greatest man cave in the five boroughs. Can okay. you paint the scene for us? Because it does seem like a lot went into the details there. Yeah. So <clears throat> me and my mom bought a house together because it's the Staten Island dream. Um, and, uh, fuck, I just, like, put a bunch of TVs and, like, a computer and, like, a couple bean bags, and, you know, it's like a fucking cave. And, uh, it's, oh, my God, dude. I'm, I don't even remember what you asked. It's all right. We'll race to the finish line here, Pete. I'm so sorry. Is it, like, a video game situation down there? No, it's much more movies. <laughs> movies and drugs. <clears throat> And like smoking weed to do a mushroom to watch movies and like just relaxing and like forgetting where you are for a little bit. It's a really nice little pad. Oh my goodness. This is the last dab. We call it the last dab because it's tradition around here to put a little extra on the last wing. Holy shit. I am going to forbid you. Okay, yeah. From doing that. Thank you. I'm going to get in your way on that. Thank you very much, because I would have done it. <laughs> but <laughs> he said this no. over here. Dom, take this. Take this. Ugh. All right. Okay, Pete Davidson, here we are at the end of the Hot Ones Gauntlet. We've touched on many of the finer points of Pete Davidson, but an even lesser known fact is that you have multiple Harry Potter themed tattoos. I do, I was into that. At least six, according to bodyartguru.com, which documented some 104 Pete Davidson tattoos. Oh Did you know God. that? No, I didn't even know I had that many, that's crazy. How many of those Harry Potter tattoos can you show us right now? And can you explain each one? Sure. Uh, this? is uh, that triangle thing that they all have, the Deathly Hallows thing. Uh, this is a lightning bolt that I got. Uh, that's Harry Potter. And uh, <laughs> this is the Phoenix from the Order of the Phoenix. And uh, this is a dire wolf. I still haven't finished Game of Thrones, but the wolves are sick. Um, and that's, that's, I think, all the ones that we can see right now. Well, look at you, Pete Davidson, all the way down the Hot Ones gauntlet. It was a heroic performance if I've ever seen one. I'm humbled oh, sitting on this end of the table. I am embarrassed and mortified. And now there's nothing left to do but roll out the red carpet for you, my friend. This camera, this camera, this uh, camera. Let the people know what you have going on in your life. Uh, please, the really only thing, fuck besides my special, but fuck that. Please go see Big Time Adolescence. Jason Orley's a genius, and they work so hard on it. And it's really, really a nice film. And uh, go see Uncut Gems. Just keep going and see that movie. It's the best fucking movie I've ever seen in my life. All right. Thank you for having me very much. All right. Good job, Pete. Good job. All right. Awesome. <laughs> Good shit, dude. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, my God. Wow, that shit was no joke. Dude. I did it, though. Yo, you went the I did it. Uh. 
Hey, what's going on Hot Ones fans? This is Sean Evans checking in with a very exciting sauce update. Now, as I'm sure you're aware, we have a new show, Hot Ones the Game Show on True TV, featuring sauces that are off the charts hot. I'm talking about the Brain Burner, the Eye of the Scorpion, the Constrictor, all extreme heat with beautiful labels designed by tattoo artists of note. And guess what? They can be yours. That's right, Brain Burner, Eye of the Scorpion, The Constrictor, they're all available at Heatness.com. Heatness.com. Heatness.com to order. And don't forget to check out Hot Ones, the game show, Tuesdays, 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 Central on True TV. Live the show if you dare. Bring the Pepperdome to your living room. And remember, milkshakes are for winners only.